So once again, welcome to all of you for this uh, NIBOSH International Diploma for Occupational Health and Safety Professionals, ID1, Examination, Process, Procedure, and Techniques. So we will be exhaustively discussing today about the exam process. Let me share the PPT. <clears throat> okay. So ID one of the Nibosh ID, how the examination process is going to take place. We have already given you two documents. You would have by now received two important documents from us. One is the Diploma Digital Assessment Learner Guide. And another one is same Diploma Digital Assessment Technical Learner Guide. The Learner Guide gives you overall picture about the examination process. The Technical Guide give you clear picture about how to use the Nebosh examination portal, how to log in, how to upload the answer sheets, all these things. So these two documents are very, very important. What I am going to do now, I am going to discuss the salient features of these two documents first. Then I will proceed to the examination techniques. So first let us discuss the digital assessment learner guide. It consists of introduction, the assessment as it is, what is the assessment, why the assessment is there, preparing you for the assessment. What is the malpractices which you are not supposed to do? Then about a professional discussion, like in IGC, we say closing interview, uh, basically to have a sort of interview or discussion with the learner. Here in IDIP, it is a more than the closing interview, it is called a professional discussion. We generally last up to 45 minutes to one hour. Then advising you how to be successful in the professional discussion. So these are the things which is covered in this guide. Now you are all in the final preparation. So what is the final preparation you are supposed to do? The course materials, which is given to you in printed format. We have invested a lot of money in getting the course materials printed in color, very beautiful, bounded and couriered to all of you. The idea was that you will read it completely time and again. So as we have been teaching you, like every week we were covering one element, next element by a virtual class like this. And you were also told to read the textbook and do the assignments parallelly. Hope most of you were doing that. So reading the textbook is very, very important. Once you read the textbook, your practical knowledge will blend with academic knowledge. Many of the people who are doing this international diploma are basically professionals. You are already working professionals. And you might be thinking that your experience or professional knowledge is enough to clear the examination. That is a wrong idea. Examination is an examination where your knowledge and skills and even understanding of the topic is checked through the examination process. That is where Depending only on your professional skill or your previous experience, you might have 10 years experience in health and safety. But you may not be able to properly write the answers or clear the exam if you don't blend that experience with the concepts or the academic concepts which are given to you in printed format to read and go through. It may look like they are very simple but please understand there are certain keywords which are very, very important for your scoring marks. So first advice to all of you. Read the textbook 
at least two to three times. Minimum two to three times you have to read the textbook. If you are not done, still time is there, you can do it. So that has got a lot of significance. That is why we have given you printed textbook. Making sure you understand all the learning outcomes. So there are learning outcomes. Within the textbook, you can see on each element at the beginning itself, it is printed very clearly the learning outcomes. Be familiar with them. Familiarize with all the learning outcomes and assessment criteria. Conduct wider research to understand how your studies relate to the real world. Go through all those websites which we have told you. Go through all those newsletters, magazines, which we have been time and again telling you to visit. While you are doing your assignments, you would have already researched so much of these documents that are very, very important. So we have been during the class itself, we have been telling you visit this website, go through this, this, this area. And when we are doing the assignment also, you might have researched. We have given you a list of documents. Which you are supposed to refer to. And all those documents, all those websites. Keep handy, go through once again. And get those ideas very clear. So all these websites we have at least told you around. Around five to six websites which are very good sources of information and uh, even when I am going to teach you the exam techniques. I will be giving you a list of that later part. So those websites. Are very good sources of information for you. To do your research work. To do the reference work. So you should be familiarized with that. So during the examination. Now the examination is going to start on the 8th of September. Normally it starts at British standard time. 9 a.m. BST 9 a.m. Normally if there is any change, we'll let you know. So during your, your examination is going to be on for almost six weeks. That is the beauty of this exam. It is not 24 hours, three hours like in the previous close but no, it's now the question paper is live for six weeks. So during the examination, what you can do, you can refer to your study materials. That is when really this textbook is going to help you. And I will be teaching you how to do the referencing. How to reach to the point where the questions are oriented when I am going to teach you the examination techniques. I will teach you. Once you get a question, how you are going to pinpoint. The answer where it is, maybe your answer may be spreaded across two, three elements. Don't think that one question may be pointing to one particular area of the textbook or one particular area of the learning outcome. It may be spread across various learning outcomes. The question can be in such a way that you are touching two, three areas so that technique we should be uh, understanding that we will teach you refer to any websites and other such sources of information you can because you are free to refer any sources of information for framing your answers framing your research project anything however the work you submit must be entirely your own Please do not cut, copy, paste any information from anywhere. There is a software called Turnitin. Most of the UK universities, they use this software. Now Nibosh is also using this software. If you have copy and pasted chunk of information, I mean to say chunk of information, paragraph, explanations, then it's easily, it is going to identify. So, you can refer anything, but the answer you frame should be your own work. Simply cut, copy, paste, you are in danger. It will be a mal taken as malpractice. Please don't do that. 
So you refer anything and anywhere, but frame your own paragraphs, frame your own answers. Again, in the examination technique part, I will be explaining to you how to develop answers. What you should not, you should not communicate with any employee of the learning partner, especially the tutors about directly or indirectly about the assessment topics. You should not. You should not communicate with other learners, maybe your friends doing the same exam. Do not communicate about any of the assessment topics or not to collaborate with them. Collaboration is when two, three people are friends and together sitting and framing the answers. So there will be clear similarity in the answers and it will be taken as malpractice. So you cannot collaborate. You should not group and make answers. Suppose you are four friends studying together. Studying is okay, but during exam, all four should be separated. All thought process of the four people should be different. It should not be same. You should not seek advice or contribution from any third parties. You know, nowadays there are so many WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, cheating the people, cheating the learners, announcing publicly that we will help you in the examination. We are experts. We can give you the answers to the questions and please understand they are doing business. They are cheating you by advertising publicly like this. You can understand their intention is simply to make money. They will, they may make one or two answers and they supply this to hundreds of people and all these are going to divorce where you will be in trouble when the software identifies similarity in answers. So please don't do that. You may be attracted because you know, during any examination, there is a pressure, there is a stress and there will be some questions which are hard to crack. And once you find such help available on the internet, somebody is announcing that I can clear you, you pay me this much amount. So if you natural tendency is to get attracted to that and pay your valuable money and unnecessary, you are actually buying trouble. You cannot cheat the software. And these people will sell the same answer to number of learners who are approaching them. And all these are finally going to one place. And there the software will definitely identify similarity and it will be a trouble. So don't lose your money. Don't lose your credibility. So don't go for any third party assistance, whether it is including proofreading by somebody or help from friends or family members, not required. We have taught you the entire topics, hours and hours of tuition we have given you. You have read, you have done the assignments. You have done the mock examinations. You are confident. Just believe in yourself and go ahead. Please do not copy paste paragraphs. It's very dangerous. During the assessment, you can refer your textbooks, your study materials. You know, that is why we have given you the printed textbook. It will be very easy for you to refer when you have a printed study materials and even other resources, we have told you number of websites. We have already informed you about the, the documents. We have also given you various number of documents and even next week we are going to give you so many other documents which are related to OHS, which you may find it very useful for reference. Hundreds of documents we can give you to you and you can use it for reference. Do not copy directly from any books, any materials which is published, the same paragraph, you should not be copy paste or looking and typing the same thing. No, not accepted. Use your own words, use your own ideas and knowledge you gained during this training. That is why you are so lucky that so many hours of tuition Whatever the mandatory hours, we have already covered it. If you look into the syllabus, you can see the ID one. The ID one syllabus says clearly, you know, how many hours of tuition has to go in. Yeah, almost 71. 
so we have go, we are going we are going more than that more than 78 to 80 hours of tuition 80 hours of tuition we have given you virtual online so why that is to pump the knowledge and know you know each and every learning outcome has been taught to you by our tutors very clearly all the doubts have been cleared to use that knowledge have some confidence and use those knowledge to frame the answers now what is called referencing so the level of referencing expected will as a minimum be to list the sources of information you have used suppose you have visited ILO website for making some reference so you have to disclose it so you are definitely you can refer the study materials the printed study materials given to you you can reference it now how the referencing to be done there is please understand along with the question paper there may be an answer template so if you are using that answer template towards the end they will ask references so there you can put serial number one two three four and disclose you can say like safety catch study materials yes you have reference why not that is allowed then ilo website you have visited so you can do www.ilo.org you can so you can disclose or you have to disclose what are the textbooks or any additional study materials or any other reference books you have used you can disclose it towards the end of the answers any area you visited for referencing can also be disclosed with urls during the exam technique i will give you more clarity on this is there a word count for my assessment your assessment will specify a word count see there may be word counts in some part of the assignment uh, so assessment and some part there may not be a word count so what you have to do you know that there are four parts part one part two part three part four each part there will be clear instructions given so please go through the instructions don't ignore the instructions none of this i am only bothered about the question no for each part of the assessment the assessment starts with instructions those instructions are very very important and very very useful you must clearly go through those instructions in that if there is a word count for that particular part it will be mentioned that this part you have to you are expected to complete within x number of words maybe 6000 words or 5000 words so there you have to follow that again word counting uh, for how many marks how many number of words like for 10 marks how many words 15 marks how many, that i will be teaching you that breakdown i will be teaching you during the exam technique so even for one mark we need to calculate if a word count is given we should know the formula how to calculate for one mark how many words so that i will be teaching you during the exam technique so if there is a word count your assessment the uh, instructions will clearly give you that so if you don't find any word count during the instructions or along with the questions then that that means that there is no word limit but still even if there is no word limit you cannot simply write volumes and volumes there should be you know some self limitation that also i will teach you how much suppose for 150 marks so how reasonably expected word limit we will be discussing later the mal practices are very dangerous you should not knowingly or unknowingly get into mal practice because you know the nibosh brand is ultimate nibosh is very much concerned about the brand value so they definitely won't allow somebody to take it without having the required knowledge by means of cheating or malpractice they will take very seriously so it is always better to be a 
diligent student learner and do it yourself so you should know what are considered to be malpractices plagiarism so plagiarism means stealing somebody's work which means some thing is in the internet some journals publications and you are just copying and pasting that into your answers that is comes under plagiarism something is written in the textbook you are simply typing the same paragraph suppose like punitive damages so there is a paragraph about what are punitive damages how they are awarded and if you are simply copying this from the textbook and typing in your answer that is plagiarism so plagiarism means you are stealing somebody else work and showing it as yours and simply we call it cut copy paste so please don't do that it will be identified it will be considered to be malpractice collusion collusion again i told you three four people are colluding and preparing answers friends discussing with each other and making the answer that comes under collusion somebody else uh, you know of course uh, you are asking help from experts uh, safety experts or somebody and i don't think they will be able to help you because the unless you have gone through the training this kind of examination process nobody else knows because they are all close to book people their thought process the studying pattern for a close to book exam is entirely different from a studying pattern and answering pattern for a open book exam please understand that so i don't think anybody can simply help you even if they help it may not be matching to the exam requirement so collusion is collaboration asking for help advices and all this then inter- impersonation that is completely somebody else is writing the exam for you the entire exam is written by somebody else and you are submitting it as your work that is impersonation so all this to be avoided not to get tempted people may be you know nowadays in the open discussion and social media there are a lot of things that uh, we can do like that we can help you like that like this open book is like that like nothing the quality integrity is well maintained please understand that and there are techniques by which there is even a team in nebosh called the ethical practice team investigating all the malpractices special team so to evade those scrutiny is very difficult so just because it is not invigilated still there are tools to identify whether the malpractice occurred or not so please don't get into that type of trouble you have learned you have ideas take references and produce your own work now what is a professional discussion at the once the examination is over that is roughly by 20th of october i think after the 6 weeks time once you have submitted the answer sheet we will plan a professional discussion with you maybe our trainers our staff can be involved in it so we will give you a schedule as early as possible a date and time if you are not comfortable with that we will discuss we will definitely we are flexible we are not rigid on that date and time we are first giving a recommended date and time so if you are comfortable with that date and time your consent will be received if you are not comfortable you can ask for a alternate date and time that will be considered of your choice and we fix it once we fix it it cannot be changed so the first time once you once we are giving you the date and time you have the flexibility to ask for a change but after that once it is freezed we may not be able to change it so exactly on the agreed date agreed time our trainers or staff uh, competent staff or trainers will be sending you a google meet link or zoom link or webex link any virtual media link and 
we'll be sitting face to face and how the things are going on we'll just see what is a professional discussion a professional discussion provides assurance that the diploma assessment submitted by the learner is their own original work which they have produced without any improper assistance so once the trainers or staff are interacting with you they are identifying whether the they are going to identify whether the answers written you are confident you are able to explain that or not so it should be conducted by a person nominated by learning partner so it will be competent trainers or competent staff from our our side it will be carried out via video link although it can also be in person to person where it is safe to do so now it is not possible as of now so it's all online it would last approximately 45 minutes so you should be mentally prepared that the professional discussion is not just like okay seeing your identity and asking one or two question and leaving now it will be a detailed discussion for up to 45 minutes what a professional discussion is not the professional discussion is not an assessment you are not going to get any score and your pass or fail is not depend on the professional discussion so you need not to be stressed professional discussion is just to ensure that the answer you wrote is by yourself so they may ask you to explain one answer okay what do you feel by this answer which you have written which you have submitted the same and that time you can also keep the uh, print out or a copy of your answer only answer the answer script which you submitted you can refer and then you can explain you cannot refer any textbooks and other materials that time during professional discussion you can only refer your own answers which you have submitted because the same answer is what they are going to ask you to explain okay so once you have done it you don't have any hesitation to explain that answer to the trainer that's it if somebody else have done it then it will be easily identifiable it is not a mark like examination professional discussion does not carry any mark professional discussion does not have any uh, thing on your result as a pass or fail but unless the professional discussion is completed your mark will not be released by nibosh say for example due to some reason you couldn't attend first time or the second time and you missed the deadline your professional discussion was not conducted because after conducting the professional discussion we have to send a report so we are unable to contact you we couldn't conduct a professional discussion with you so we will be sending not conducted then nebosh will mark you as absent so whatever you submitted even though it is corrected and marked the mark will not be awarded or disclosed if you don't attend the professional discussion your attendance will be absent from the examination so please understand that so you your pass or fail has nothing to do with professional discussion professional discussion is only your identification check and to check that you are the person who has made the answers that's all so all the units which units are learners required to complete a professional discussion all the units whether it is id1 id2 so after id1 there will be professional discussion now later you will be taking id2 exam then also there will be a professional discussion then you take id3 exam after that also there will be a professional discussion suppose you are reappearing later for any unit after the reappearing also there will be a, so every exam is followed with the professional discussion yes it is applicable for resitting also learners are permitted to refer to their assessments during the professional only assessments during professional discussion you cannot refer textbooks websites ask help no somebody to accompany you no not possible you can refer to your submitted answer script because you need to explain that right what is the format of a professional discussion how this discussion is conducted so the main stages are first introduction the the interviewer will introduce himself to you 
and you will be asked to establish your identity so you have to show any one id proof the best is the one you have given for registration maybe your passport or national id or driving license these are the, these are the three things acceptable passport national id or driving license you have to show to the camera so which means you should have a webcam so the examiner will cross check and identify as per that you are the same person so your identity will be established then the exam the interviewer will also ask you to show the room where you are sitting by rotating the camera to check that nobody else is in the room to assist you and the interviewer will then ask some questions to you based on your answers you should be able to explain it so it's simply asking you to explain your own answer what you so if you have written by your own you will be easily explaining that right then finally the close after that the closing interview will be so in the interview he may ask some questions go deeper into the subject which you have written by seeing your response it is easily evidence that it is the same person written or not so accordingly the report will be given to the nibosh that's it no mark nothing it is just a procedure to establish identity to establish that you are the person who have attended the exam you must attend a professional discussion if you do not attend then your mark will not be awarded and you will be considered as absent please understand that you will be given a date and time for your professional yes as i told you we will be giving you a schedule and we are flexible to change it once or twice max once you freeze it then no change is possible you can show a valid id proof which is passport national id or driving license which i already told you show the room you are in the interviewer needs to see there is no one else assisting to you you will also need to sit in such a way that the door is visible so your computer camera will be facing towards the door first you behind you should be the door of the room so that is the instruction now during answering to the professional discussion answer your questions honestly and if you are not sure don't try to guess and argue you are told to explain your own answers just answer honestly the interviewer is not at all assessing you so don't have that stress and for your professional interview there is no marking also you will be required to provide as much details as possible when answering your questions when the exam when the interviewer is asking you to explain this answer whatever you know about that answer you have to disclose listen carefully to the questions asked to you and answer them succinctly try to relax this is not a pass or fail game this is just a procedure so you need not to worry whether you are getting marks or your performance is good or not just relax and it is an opportunity to demonstrate what you have learned during your studies you have put in a lot of hours of studies class you have been attending you know around 80 hours of class you have been doing some personal work so this is an opportunity to explain to the interviewer what knowledge you have gained from this course that's the best way to do that so relax and be confident and just answer to the questions what the interviewer ask you that's all so the examination marking you know like uh, the id1 is a typical exam it consists of four parts so you can see here part 1 is a scenario based question is of 150 marks the part 2 is a workplace based task like a risk profiling what you have done 150 marks then the reflective task like we have given you in assignments all this we have given you assignments right so you are familiar so you know now what is a scenario based question is going to come about 
how the workplace based task you are going to do because already you have done a risk profiling which we have the task is given to you then we asked you to reflect on the leadership styles you have done it and we also asked you to do a research project so all these will come as 150 150 150 so, so total will be 600 marks on this total you have to score 50 percent to pass not individual overall out of the total 600 if your score goes above 300 and above you will be pass so the passing requirement is overall 50 percent is the passing requirement okay so out of the whole 600 if you score 300 it is pass and above 300 and above you are pass that is the marking scheme so how the id1 marking will be done sample i am giving you an example suppose you scored in part 1 90 mark out of 150 you scored at 90 in part two, you scored better, 120 out of 150. In part three, you scored little less, 75. In part four, you scored 80. So all this will be added. It comes to 365. So your mark is 365 out of 600, which means you are pass. So your percentage will be taken the percentage is 61 percent okay so this will be your final mark so the whole 600 is going to be converted into 100 so id1 your mark will be taken as 61 out of 100 okay so this is how they are going to combine the mark take the percentage and convert it into the final mark so final mark will be always in 100 out of 100 so this percentage is going to reflect as your mark under out of 100 or overall like uh, if you look at id2 id2 is going to be out of 300 out of 300 marks id2 id3 will be also out of 300 so if out of 300 you scored 150 that's 50 percent okay suppose you scored 150 marks out of 300 which is just a pass so this will be converted into percentage that is 50 percentage so that will be your mark 50 out of 100 so your final mark list will be out of 300 marks only so id1 you got 61 id2 you got 50 id3 you got 50 suppose like this all out of 100 all mark will be converted out of 100 and the final result your grading will be based on this mark this total okay so id1 will be finally converted to out of 100 id2 which is actually in 300 marks your question paper will be of 300 marks converted to percentage your mark it will come as 50 out of 100 similarly suppose it is 50 so like this total will be calculated and that total your grading will be based on if you are between 150 195 it is a pass if your total comes to 196 to 225 it is a credit if your total comes 226 or higher it will be a distinction this will be your grade classification something like this what i have worked out here yeah so you can see here one gentleman suppose sample he got 365 out of 600 which is 61 percent so his final mark goes to 61 out of 100 and somebody in id2 got 160 so it is 53 percent out of 300 final mark will be 53 out of 100 id3 he got 170 out of 300 which is 57 percent so his final mark 57 now all these will be added as the final mark so it is 171 out of 300 and is a pass this is how the grading system will be done
Okay, so before I go into the digital assessment, we can have a small Q and A session. So now coming to the part two, the technical learner guide. So this technical learner guide is going to explain to you how to open the portal, how to upload your answer sheets and all these things. So this process flow chart is very nicely explained here. You can see the process flow says the first step towards your exam is your registration which we have already completed and all of you those who have registered for this 8 september exam you might have already received an examination entry confirmation form at the start there will be a name and address don't mind it but at the bottom you will see your learner number if you have already taken up any NABOSH exam whether it is igc hsw process safety anything you are already allotted with the learner number it will be same because learner number once allotted is unique so don't worry about it it will be same learner number for all the new people who is taking first time and emotion qualification the learner number will be a new number issued then learner name is given it is clearly told check that following details that means your name in the examination entry confirmation form should be exactly matching to your uh, ID proof which you have given for registration. If there is any spelling mistake, let us know. We can get it corrected now free of cost. If you are bringing this issue after certificates are issued, then there will be a charge for that. So all of you check your name, check the learner number, satisfy yourself, keep the exam entry confirmation form. Your result date is also already declared in that exam entry confirmation form. So that is the second step. So first we register, then you receive a confirmation from the NIVOSH. Then you have to revise and prepare. Now this is the time for you to revise and prepare for like any exam. Don't think that this is an open book assessment. So, you know, uh, I can, after getting the question, I can refer in. See, the preparation is required. It is testing your knowledge, same like a closed book exam. So your preparation, if you have not started preparing, please start now. Start reading the textbook. I told you textbook reading is very, very, very important. I'm again and again telling you. If you don't do a textbook reading, you will definitely suffer during the examination. So how many times you can read the textbook before the exam? That is a challenge now. Please go through it. You might have already read it during the, our classes like weekly we used to give you assignments so for doing the assignments and then you might have referred but now at least go for a further reading two three times reading and familiarize it will be very useful for you when you are preparing the answers take it from me we have given you printed study with a y because we know the value of this textbook and every learner even in igc we get Better result, the reason is we are giving printed study materials and they are reading it by highlighting, underlining. You know, when you highlight and read certain important points and all, it is a psychological human effect that uh, when you have some study materials in your hand and when you do some kind of, you know, markings and uh, highlightings, it, it gets into your brain, you know, the subconscious brain, and it will be very useful for you. Utilize it. Utilize the study materials, a beautiful study material is given to you, investing in huge money. The reason is for your benefit and utilize that. Explore the Nibosh online assessment now. Exactly one week before your exam date, you, are, you will get another mail in the same email in which you got the EEC, examination entry confirmation. Is the mail which you received EEC, you mark it not spam. So that mail ID, the same mail ID, you are going to get the, the, the portal login details. I presume it will come to you on 1st of September, if close to 1st of September, because they say one week before the exam date. So one week before the exam date means you can expect it by 1st of September. Check 31st August, 
first, second and all. Okay, you check the spam folder also. Sometime it may it's a machine generated, so it may go to the spam. So check your inbox, check your spam. You will see the mail, your examination login portal link will be there. You click the link inside that there will be a username and password. Generally, the username is your learner number. So you click the link, exam portal will open. Put the username, put the password which is given to you. Don't copy paste, you have to type it, I think. Password, you enter inside. First thing it will ask you to change the password. So you give your own, you know, you have your personal mail IDs, you have personal password. Don't give complicated new password which is not familiar. Give a familiar password which you always remember. Then once you change the password, you enter inside and you can just see what is there inside. Okay, you can uh, set the time, your country time, and all these things you can do. That is all given detail in the technical learner guide. I'm not going into that area. You can read it and do it. So there will be nothing here now. So you can log out. N number of time you can log in, log out, log in, log out. Even if you forget the password also, don't worry. There is a forgot password button. You click, you will get a link in your email, same email. So your registered email is everything for you. Even your result will come in that email only. So you click the link. It will ask for new password and you can, there is nothing wrong in that. So on, this is just familiarization, is it? Then on the day of exam, as I told you, after the 9 a.m. BST, so you can all convert 9 a.m. BST to your local country time. You log in, you will see there is a question paper in PDF and there is also maybe an answer template, which is in MS Word. You can download it. Then log out. You need not to keep it on, log it out. Then your game starts. Okay. Then you have a number of days, six weeks, but I would be giving you an answering plan you know, when I teach you the exam techniques. You know, otherwise you will think tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow never comes. You will end up in shortage of time. Six weeks is not that long because four part assessment, 600 marks. You don't have so much of time. So how to plan it? How many days to take to for part one, part two? I'll be giving you idea. So you have like a time frame. And you can benchmark whether I am completing it within this time frame or not. So you are comfortably, I would see two days before the closing date, you should have uploaded your answers. Don't wait for the last day. There will be heavy rush. Sometimes the server will get overloaded and block. So many, you know, things happens on the final day. So at least two days buffer, you should have uploaded your answer sheets. That's the best way to do it. So on the assessment day, the you will get the question paper and answer template, as I told you. Then once you have submitted your answer sheets, your exam is over. Then the professional discussion date will be given to you. It will not be too late. As early as possible, we will be giving you the date and time. So professional discussion will happen. We will send a report. Then you will get the result on the day which is told to you in the exam entry confirmation form. So this is the process. So this is how your portal will look like. You can, the moment you enter inside, you can see it will ask for username and password here to log in. So Suppose you, you and all those people who already have done some digital assessment like IG, for you, the username password will be same. Which, suppose even IG, you have done digital assessment previously, IGC. Same username password will be applicable here also. So you may not get a mail again. You have to dig the old mail. Okay. And check what was the username. Your learner number is the username. You, have, you might have forgot the password, no problem. You put your learner number. Anyway, learner number you will not forget because it is already there in the mark list. It is there in the previous exam entry confirmation form. It will be there in the certificate. So learner number you put and click forgot password. Same link will come to the mail ID and you can log in. So all of you note that those people who have done digital assessment previously may not get a new uh, link because you already have it. 
those people who are new to digital assessment first time digital assessment you will get the link for the login so this is the process for uh, change of password like it will ask for your email id or use name any any one thing you give it will you can change the password so on the day of assessment you can see here the question paper and answer template will be there so when you click on international diploma you can download the question paper and the answer template okay like id1 the you have to select it will be there the course for which you have registered will be there you click on that for you it will be id1 international diploma 2021 you click and you see this it will open so you can download the pdf question paper and the ms word answer template and use it it is not compulsory to use the answer template provided for all the assessments however it is recommended i will also recommend that you should use the answer template because the answer template the advantage is already the question numbers are there and your name uh, the space and all is already written where you have to write your name where you have to write your learner number and all these things so it is like a pre designed template so as i told you you can uh, make your answers in separate file and just copy it and paste it to here it is not a problem it is compulsory to use the answer template if it is displayed on your assessment paper suppose in the instruction of part 1 it is written that you must submit the answers in your answer template only then you have to so if it is there is a condition you cannot submit your paper you have to use the answer template if there is no condition then there is a choice but mainly we prepared all of us all of you follow the if there is an answer template better to follow that the first section of the answer template will need to be completed by you like your name same name which is the exam entry confirmation form don't use nicknames short names so keep the exam entry confirmation form in that what name has come the same name you have to enter here don't use initials and all whatever your name is printed on the exam entry confirmation the same name you have to put here then the learner number is there put it then learning partner details you know safety catch we want to put our number it is 822 so you can write safety catch bracket lp number 822 so then you can save the answer template and you can submit it so whenever you are using the answer template after typing or copy pasting any answers just put control s control s don't forget to save it suppose there is no requirement of uh, answer template there is no condition so you would like to submit in a word file of your own choice then this information should be there on the first page the unit code like id1 date of assessment your name your learner number your learning partner name page numbering for all the pages question numbers if word count if there is a word count limitation the total word count not for each answer if they ask you to specify word count or they are giving a word count like you have to complete this assessment within 6000 words then at the end you have to specify your total words in that all the referencing will not be counted suppose you are putting some source ilo website that will not be counted in the word reference word count only your answers word count you have to total word count you have to mention so when you are typing in word each answer you select at the bottom you will see the number of words the selected number of words so you can add it each question you each answer you select just select the answer you will see at the bottom the selected words number so you add everything and you will get the final how much is there you have to write it then list of references what we told at the end so these things if you are using your own word file not using the answer template because in the answer template all these are already there as a 
field there you will be putting inputs only but if you are using a plain ms word you have to add all this on the first page itself so i told you your final answers can be converted to pdf or you can submit as doc and docx not any other format only these three format are accepted the first one is pdf second you can use e doc or docx handwritten answers are not accepted so the file size another advantage you convert to pdf is the file size will get reduced so maximum file size 100 mb 100 mb is too much you have a lot of file space and number of files 20 so it doesn't matter you are only four files part one part two part three part four so four files you can upload and all together it should not cross 100 mb normally it doesn't cross and pdf you need not to worry at all it is not going to cross and you are not going to upload any photographs maybe your research project but that also you are going to make uh, as a pdf only so automatically the file size will get skewed so when you are uploading suppose you finished all the exam two three days before the deadline you have uploaded but then you thought oh i could have done this uh, part one the question number two little bit more you can still do it you can remove that old upload and you can add the new upload so this removing and uploading the new one but be careful uh, when you are uploading it should be the answer there are people confusing with draft or uploading part to two times so while uploading the answer you should be very careful i would say all the final answers should be saved in a separate folder called the final answer to upload and then from there you upload because some people use some rough work on desktop then they may have some draft in there here so finally when uploading they get confused so whichever is your final answer you should first to make it in a separate folder final answers four parts so you don't have any confusion so from there you have to upload so you want to remove it you, you can remove you just log in there is a remove button you remove the answer and upload the new answer this is all possible till the closing of the exam after that you cannot do that okay the closing date of the exam file naming of answer sheet this is very important so all your answer sheets like part one part two part three part four it should have unique file name you can have file name like this you can see here your name as given in the easy full name okay like smith john then your learner number then your learning partner name okay so only this three things you are supposed to write because part one part one all in the answer sheet itself it will be there you are going to write part three research part four research project okay so once there is no answer template to a part your first sheet of the answer should consist of those details if you want i can go back please note down this please note down this information because you know for like a research project and all uh, there may not may not be a answer template so you will be doing it in a word file separate so in that this information should be there on the first page so you can note it down it is already there in the catalog which we have given to you this pdf document already we have given to you this uh, digital technical learners guide you can see there so please understand if there is an answer template field name will be already there you have to input the field but if there is no answer template that part the first page should consist of this information then your answers will follow the first page should have very clearly this information okay so you can say id1 part 1 id1 part 2 id1 part 3 id1 part 4 like that the unit code 
So ID one also should be there. The part name also should be there in the bracket. ID one bracket part one. ID one bracket part two. Like that, it should be. Very clearly specify the part number. So don't leave any of this bullet point. All these bullet points should be covered. So this is how your uh, file name should look like. Like this. If you want to merge all the four also, it is possible. But separate, separate also, it is possible. So we have already given you this guide in PDF. The learner guide also we have supplied to you. The digital assessment technical learner guide also, please. I have covered only the salient points. There are many, many beautiful information already available in this. Please go through that. Don't ignore these documents because you should familiarize with the process and procedure. So please go through these two documents. It is it will be very, very useful to you. So with that, I end this first part of the discussion. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Should you have any more queries, uh, you can contact on the given number, the Y WhatsApp.